Don Mazzella here again for Small Business Digest. Well, you know, I've been looking forward to this um, uh, meeting because um, about six months ago, I, um, I had an experience, which we'll, we'll talk about later on. But uh, these two, uh, our two, two guests today, and we have two on, uh, are going to talk about ways to ease the way your, your way through a divorce, which uh, I, I've gone through, and uh, I think now almost half of America has. Um, but hopefully, their book will help couples who've decided they can't no longer uh, get live together, and uh, uh, have decided. That they don't want a self-help book to save their marriage, but to make the the crash of their marriage easier. So we'll start with Jeffrey uh, Stevens. Jeffrey, welcome to the program. Uh, tell you. us a little, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing, and then we'll go to Ray. Okay, uh, I grew up in New York City. Uh, I became an attorney many years ago. I've been practicing for over forty years and have handled many divorces many family law issues, and I'm also a novelist. I've got seven published novels, an eighth coming out later this year, and somewhere along the way, about a year or two ago, I had the idea of writing this book, and uh, I'm just unhappy with the way the divorce system works in our country in general, and I realized that I couldn't only approach this from the legal point of view, but that I would need someone to help me on the emotional, psychological point of view to help people along this journey to smooth the path for them, to make them see that there's sunshine at the end and that there are ways to have this happen without it being as painful as and expensive as we so often hear about it. And so I went to Ron Raymond, who I know is also very experienced, but he's a psychologist. And that's how the book became uh, in being, as it were, uh, between the two of us. Hmm. Well, uh, Jeffrey, are you an attorney or are you... Are you an attorney or a, a, a consultant? I am an attorney. I oh. still practice, and I and as I say, I also write novels. Okay. Well, Ron Raymond, I apologize. I got your last name mixed with your first name. So uh, join us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your background and what you do. Okay. Like, like Jeffrey, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, not New York City, but Brooklyn, New York. And um, I went to New York University, and very early on in my my training, um, I was assigned to the uh, at Oklahoma University, where I got my doctorate degree in clinical psychology and neuropsychology. I um, was assigned to the uh, clinical counseling center for students, and I was really struck by how many graduate students came to that counseling center be because of being dissatisfied with their marriage and wanting to get divorced. And that got me interested in the subject. And since then, I have worked with hundreds of families um, who are in the process of getting divorced. And I don't think Jeff mentioned this, but one of our real efforts, uh, because I saw many families who found that um, they got divorced and they thought they were just going to go from A to Z to get divorced. And they didn't realize that this was a whole process that they were going to go through with loads of emotional feelings and loads of antagonistic kinds of things happening to them. So um, I have counseled now or, or in therapy, worked with hundreds of families going through divorce. And um, as far as myself, I am married 59 years, uh, have two children, one a PhD psychologist, the other one a certified uh, cardiologist. And I and Jeffrey and I have talked tons and tons and tons about the divorce process. So I think we, we are able to begin to talk about it whenever you're ready. Well, well, I have to say to our audience, stay tuned. This is not a downer. They're here to help make it a pos as positive as you can make the divorce. But now I'm going to say you ha have a new book out, don't you? Yes. Tell us about it. Okay, Jeffrey, you want to start by okay. telling us? So, so when I came up with the idea, the book is called The Road to Splitsville, and we make a couple of things clear right from the first page. Number one, 
If you're interested in saving your marriage, this book is not for you. You should run, do not walk to a, to a really qualified therapist of some sort and talk things through and try and make your marriage work because we believe in the sanctity of marriage. I, by the way, I'm married 45 years. Uh, however, however, as, as you mentioned when we were talking earlier, Don, uh, 50% of marriages in this country end in divorce, 60% of second marriages, and 70% of third marriages end in divorce, which tells you that people getting divorced and remarrying are making the same mistakes. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to help people not only get through the process, but not repeat the same mistakes over and over again. So the subtitle of the book is how to get divorced without making yourself crazy, your children miserable, or your lawyer wealthy, and find your way to happiness. And so that's really what this book is about. So it is an upbeat book, and it's very very interactive because there are numerous questionnaires and numerous uh, examples that we give of, of relationships that we've worked on, I from the legal side and Ron from the emotional side. And I know one of the things you're interested in, just if I may take a leap of faith here, is how many couples who work together then get divorced and how difficult that becomes because marriage is a tough gig to begin with we live in a disposable society people are willing to throw in the towel way too early in my view but clearly if 50 percent of marriages are ending first marriages are ending in divorce that tells you where we are as a country but when you're working together you're adding an entire layer of pressure in that marriage because number one number one you're spending a heck of a lot of time together i mean in many marriages you know one or both of the spouses go to work and they only see each other early in the morning and then later at night and maybe they have dinner together and then they sleep together. But when you're working together, it's I'm telling you, it's a night and day thing. And I'll give you some examples from my point of view. And, and Ron could do that as well. So the time factor is one thing. The second thing is the work itself, the expectations that each spouse puts on the other, the uh, the demands for the work product, the quality of that work product. Of the, are you equally sharing the load of the responsibility? And then the third factor that becomes a big one, and we all know what it is, it's called money, because now you've got money in the mix. And that's really a problem for a lot of couples, because who's spending too much of it, who's not earning enough of it, and so forth. And when you're in the mix together, again, another level of pressure. So I admire couples and I, and I was with one, ironically, I was with on Saturday night. I'd never met them before and they're a couple and they've worked together for years and years and they make it work. And it, I'll just jump ahead for a second. Then I'll let Ron take over. But one of the ways they make it work is through a word I will call compartmentalizing. They do not let their personal relationship get in the way of their work relationship. They really do. When they put the key in the door and they happen to own this big spa salon thing in Westchester County, New York, when they put the key in the door at the end of the day and go home, they don't talk about business anymore. They just don't. No matter, no matter how pressing an issue might be, their rule is when we get there tomorrow morning, we'll talk about it then. But now we're a married couple. We're not business partners. And so that helps the process. But Ron could go take it from there. Yeah, one of the things well, that I Ron, think... Ron, let me interrupt you. Tell okay. us the book and where you can get it. Show the book and where you can get it. Okay, this is the book. I, am I holding it in a place where it can be perfect. seen? Perfect. Okay. Not as good looking as you, but perfect. And <laughs> you can get it. The easiest place to get it is Amazon. You can get it uh, if you order from your bookstores. We love to support local bookstores, of course. Uh, we did it in paperback, so it's immensely affordable. It's 18 bucks. It's filled as I say, with interactive questionnaires and programs. So this is not just sit back and read and we're going to give you the answers. We're going to help you find answers for yourself on how to get, as Ron says, from A to Z, making all the stops along the way, as Frank Sinatra said in the song. And that's what this book is about. It's really there to help. So also in the beginning of the book, we made it clear, Ron and I are not taking on any new clients. I'm not taking on any new divorces. And Ron is not taking any more matrimonial cases on. So therefore, this is not some kind of an effort on our part to build up our businesses. This is an effort to help you if you're in the throes of a divorce or if you're thinking about it, it's an effort to get you on a smoother path to get through this journey. That's what it's about. And to go on after the journey, uh, right. as part of the journey going on. Um, you know, Don, in terms of the question of, of couples working together, uh, Jeff said that many couples 
have the the ability to turn the key and go home and not talk about business at all. But I want to put another point in there. I've seen a lot of couples who, when they put that key in the door to open the business, have difficulty leaving the divorce issues that they're fighting with at home behind, and they bring them in uh, to to their work environment. And unfortunately, what we didn't mention before, I have seen a lot of, is people overlook the dynamics that go on within an organization when the other people know that a couple who work together are getting divorced and there's all sorts of fears about what do we say how do we talk to them and things develop that 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 need not exist within the environment the work environment well let me jump in the, this program is small business digest we talk small business and uh, being a small business owner you ha- you're 24 7 but with your business if, if, in most cases. And yes, it works if you can close the, the key, but uh, I know very few couples that can close the door and and, and ignore it the rest of the the, the evening. Uh, so um, uh, I, I'd like you to address that issue. Uh, the, I, I, in fact, I'm not even going to say, you guys uh, go down that, that road, the road any way you can. Because in our study, well, like I said, we looked at 73 couples who had been on the show, and 31 had the divorce since being on the show. I don't know what the, whether the show had anything to do with it, but, uh, um, but anyway, but, but in talking to them, they said three things that caused the fr- friction. Infidelity, malfeasance, and uh, uh, success. Not failure but success, because they could not handle uh, how successful they were. Uh, yeah. when... If I can jump in for a second, when I was using that example, I was using them sort of <clears throat> as a paradigm. I think what you're saying, Don, is much more the case, which is most the large majority of couples who work together cannot leave the work at the office. They take it home with them, and that's what leads to the matrimonial problems, and that gets us all the way to where Ron went, because he went a step further than I did. He already had them divorcing. I was really talking about people who are trying to make it work while they are working together. Once you've decided that you can make it work, for example, infidelity, which is one of the most common reasons marriages break up, as we know, once that occurs, and you've got a business to split. It's it's a headache. There is no there's no question about it because now the now the issue is are you is there any possible way you could continue to work together? Very rare. Uh, can one spouse afford to buy the other out? Also rare. And are they willing? Is the other spouse willing to be bought out? And so that's why couples tend to then start beating each other up. Lawyers get rich, and they don't do themselves any good. So there are ways to handle this. But there's no question that unlike other divorces, this is a more complicated form of the battle, if you will. And it's not unusual that they wind up there in the first place because, as I pointed out earlier, these various pressures that come from working together as well as being married. I mean, marriage is tough enough without having to be together 24-7. Well, let me ask you this question. Let's go through the process. Um, I don't know if you deal with first. How do you recognize that you go, you need to divorce? Um, are there telltale? Are there signs or something? Is there a, a a point of no return where where you say divorce is the only solution? Every well, every I, think I can respond to that, Jeff. Yeah, I think what I was going to say is the point at which I think really tells us that the marriage needs to break up is when trust has has gone in the marriage because that's really what holds so many people together is the feeling that they can un- unquestionably trust each other no matter what and we mentioned infidelity before i think i've seen a number of situations where this is really complicated because the infidelity is off is not often but sometimes involving one person with another one within that small business environment yeah, that's oh. worse. <laughs> that's even that's even worse yeah, yeah. Well, you know, okay. Uh, so you decide the trust is gone. We've got to move move forward. Um, uh, by the way, one of the things um, I found in this and other marriages is that the uh, in, in the infidelity comes because the husband gets um, uh, jealous of the wife's success, whether within the business 
or or um, uh, uh, outside where one where the partner the wife is more successful. And I don't know if you saw that, but a recent New York Times article about the blogger who committed suicide, but she the divorce. Um, she she was. Um, they were divorced, and the reason was I happen to know from a different source was that the husband was, who was also a blogger, was jealous of his wife's success. Yeah, but, I saw but that. Uh, uh, we're limited time. Let's go now. Um, you're thinking of divorce. What are some of the things you you should be doing to ease this path of divorce? Okay. Which is why you're so, here. All right. From a legal point of view, and by the way, I just want to throw in real quick on based on what you said. In our experience, both Ron and mine, the male ego is generally more tender than the woman's. Women could put up with a lot more than men. So a woman does not get jealous of her husband's success. She's just jealous that he's cheating. <laughs> men tend to be jealous just of the success itself, but that's another issue for another day. Okay, so the first thing, the first thing you need to do is, it's generally speaking, it's one of the parties that decides they want the divorce. So say, for example, the wife starts cheating on the husband, but somebody at work or outside work, and the husband says, I can't put up with this, I need a divorce, or vice versa. It's it's rare that they both come together and say, you know, we've run our we've run our race, we need to get divorced. So if you're the party who has decided you want to get divorced and you're in a business with your spouse, the first thing you should do is go and get a good forensic accountant to begin valuing that business before any games start being played. Before you even, I mean, my advice to a client would be before you even announce to him that you want out of this marriage, get yourself a forensic accountant and start to compile the records. You don't want to be in these situations, which I've seen way too many times in 45 years, where these records suddenly disappear or they're not available or they've been adulterated and so forth. So that's the first thing. Find out what it's about. Second thing is talk to a therapist like like a Ron Raymond and determine what it is you want from this. It's very important. It's not, you know, you, you'd think it would be obvious, but it's not. Like in some instances, you could talk this through with somebody and decide, you know what, as successful as this business is, I don't want to be in this business anymore. I want to get paid out of this business. Let him buy me out. Even if it's over time, I'm going to go do something else because I'm a competent person. I help build this business. Isn't that right, Ron? I mean, that's what you yes. do. You have to make a decision. Yes, and based on that, what Don was asking, I think in my experience, one of the most important things that has to happen is that these people have to talk about this. So often it's stuff that just goes on without any opening, without any ability to open it up and really discuss it and to, to get at the feelings, for example, that the woman might have of the husband's success or whatever it is. Yeah, well, in fairness, I just want to say that was going to be my third point, but because I'm a lawyer and he's the psychologist, I'm less concerned about the feelings at that point, Don, because if you've already decided you want a divorce, I think you've got to get with somebody, and it might not even be a psychologist, it might be a business advisor, a lawyer, uh, a friend who knows the both of you that you trust, and sit down and say, okay, we need to split this up somehow without killing the goose that laid the golden egg. So if you've got the business and you're, and you're making widgets, you know, you don't want to do something that's going to destroy the, the profitability of this widget making company. You want to do it in a way that's going to keep the company going. And so often one spouse or the other doesn't see it that way because they want their revenge, right? You cheated on me. I'm going to take this whole thing down. Not smart. And that's what we try and help people with in this book, seeing that and protecting yourself. Yes, and I think what I'm saying, Jeff, I think I'm saying the same thing you are, but it's so important for this to be an open discussion. And so often it's under the table and these these ideas and thoughts and feelings don't get expressed. Yep, I agree. Well, if they were expressed, they wouldn't be the divorcing. They well, may that's still a, be that's divorcing. a nice thought. That's a nice thought. But the fact is, even if you express them, Tom, sometimes the expression is you're an SOB and I'm going to take you down. I mean, I've been in the middle of too many of those to tell you. But the idea that at least you get it out in the open and you say, OK, what are we going to do with this? Because, again, you've got to treat the business as if it's another person at the table. You know what I mean? You really, you know what I'm saying, Don? You got to really yeah. treat it like, let's not disrupt this business. Let's figure out a way that we can both continue to benefit, even if we hate each other's guts. 
And somehow, if you could work that through, maybe the hate diminishes a little bit and you have a way to move into the future. Because one misconception, I I have to throw this in there. One misconception that people have about divorce is, boy, I can't wait to get divorced to get away from this person. It is very (laughs) rare. It is very rare that you're done with them forever, right? You may have children. There are going to be weddings and funerals and, and birthdays and so forth. And even if you don't have children, you're going to have these entangling financial dealings. So they don't just disappear from your life. You're going to have to find a way to effectively communicate in the going forward. And if you can do that, you're more likely to get healthy yourself faster and find another relationship. If you're going to get caught up in the hate, you're only hurting yourself. Well, let's stop right here. Your book again for our audience. Hold it up, Ron. Yeah, I got it right here. Here it is. <laughs> well, you got to talk, Ron, for the, the, the road screen to get to you. The, the road, road to through. And well, again, the book is designed to help people go through the process, I think, in a less a less intense emotional experience than they would if they hadn't read and looked at some of the re- things we, we haven't talked about is to go in, we help them go into what created this marriage to begin with. Therefore, they can decide what has dissipated in the marriage relationship if they know what really created it. Well, keep going. I don't want to, we have a very limited time. So give us three or four other things that you should be looking for uh, uh, doing in the book, please. Well, first of all, as Ron points out, one of the first questionnaires in the book, and people think it's counterintuitive until they get into it, is to look at why you got married in the first place. And the reason we do that is because the more you understand about why you married that person, the more you'll understand, because look, you got married because you're in love. I mean, 99% of marriages start because you're in love, right? 1% or something weird or a shotgun wedding, but 99% started in love and now you're in hate. And you have to find out how you got from there to here so that you don't repeat that in the future. And also so that you can deal with this person going forward, as we say. And then in addition, and, and again, a lot of these examples include people who work together and so forth in the book to read these examples and know you're not alone. What you're experiencing has been experienced by millions of people before you. You're going to survive this. Yes, you're going to go through some upset. You're going to go through denial and grief and anger and guilt and, 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 and a sense of revenge or vengeance. But in the end, you're going to come out on the other side. And how you want to come out on the other side is critical. You want to come out on the other side a better person for yourself and more likely to be happy? Or do you want to you want to come out on the other side continuing to fight with your ex over a business that you're starting to damage because the people working there are unhappy and because you're hurting the business and now you're diminishing your income? Makes no sense. So we try and help you find a way to work together, no matter how angry you are at each other at this moment. And we've been through plenty of them. I've been through some very, very angry couples. And in the end, if they can find a way to communicate either directly or through an intermediary, they're going to wind up better in the end. You know, one of the things that I find is rarely discussed that is very essential, and that is what do we tell the people in our working environment about this marriage and why are we dissolving it? They really need to talk about that. The couple needs to talk about that and be on the same page in terms of what they're telling. Because lots of times I find one or the other member of the couple will be bad mouthing the other one to the the work environment. Right. And that, that doesn't work. And never forget that those people who are working in that company for the, for the couple, they're not really worried about the couple. They're worried about themselves. Am I still going to have a job? Is this company going to survive? Am I still going to get a bonus at Christmas time? That's going to be their interest. And so being able to reassure them as a team is, again, it's this whole communication issue becomes critical to the survival of the company and to, you know, dealing with your staff. The, the other thing I think that needs to be mentioned is that we talked about children just briefly, but uh, I've seen a number of situations where they di- the couple disagrees on what aspect in dissolving the company, what aspect of the company goes to the children and what doesn't. And this is a, a oftentimes a source of great dissension between two people getting divorced. Uh, meaning uh, who, uh, which of the children should su- succeed them? Right. Or... Exactly. Who should yeah. succeed them? Who should work in the business? Who 
it shouldn't work in the business and maybe the kids don't want to work in the business. I mean, you know, there are a lot of moving parts here, as we've said from the outset, in in a, in a divorce situation where they run a business together. It's a, it's a lot of additional issues that have to be addressed. But if addressed correctly, people could come out of this hole. Otherwise, they're going to hurt themselves. And I can say that I bet at least in 60 percent of the situations I worked with like this, this the children did not want to work in the business. Yes. But they were being forced to. Yeah. Yes. For many Ron, reasons. Ron, uh, Ron uh, the book again, hold it up one more time sure. because sure. we're getting Ron, short on time. But you got to talk in order for the for the camera to get to you. Oh, okay. Um, this this is the book that we both wrote, and and I need to say we did a lot of research and a lot of uh, collaboration on it. So it's oh, really it's... really the product of an attorney looking at a divorce and a psychologist looking at a divorce uh, after seeing thousands of people literally together. <laughs> It's kind of sad, um, you know. Growing up, uh, a, a couple stayed together, even though they might have hate each other, etc. For for the sake of the children and the sake of the company. But anyway, we only have a minute left. Who wants to uh, sign uh, sign off? Jeff, why don't you talk a little bit about the book? Sign okay. Okay. Once again. The, the subtitle of the book is How to Get Divorced Without Making Yourself Crazy, Your Children Miserable, Your Lawyer Wealthy, and Finding Your Path to Happiness. And the lawyer wealthy part is a big issue for me because I feel that too many times, especially when there's a business involved, the legal fees and the expert fees run up the gazoo for no reason at all. No one knows the business better than the parties. They should save their money keep the money for themselves, not buy their lawyer a new Mercedes Benz. They should be keeping that money for themselves, for their children and so forth and work things out because in the end, the result is inevitable. You're going to be divorced and that's going to be the, that's the decision you've made. So learn to live with that the best way you can. Let us help you with these questionnaires and with these workshops. Be willing to do the work through this book. It's not a long book, but I'm telling you, it will be beneficial. Everyone who's gone through it loves it. Jeffrey, you know, I'd like, I'd like to say, John, that one of the things that people need to know is that the book, again, I'm going to hold it up. The book has inherent in it three downloads that someone reading it can, can uh, access that help them to moderate the ex emotional experiences of the divorce with um, relaxation and meditation type right. exercises. And they can just download these. Yeah, they can go. Oh, by the way, yes. Let me add real quick. I know you're out of time now. We have a website, which is, guess what? The road to splitsville.com. And so if you go on there, you could learn more about the book. You could access the meditation free of charge. We're happy to make that available to people. They really are helpful. And you could see what's going on with the book. You can get it on Amazon. You could buy it in your local bookstore. Road to Splitsville. It's going to be very helpful if you're going through a divorce. On that note, Jeffrey and Ron, we say thank you for, for, for me, a very illuminating time. I hope I never have to use your, your book. <laughs> thank you, Don. We God bless. It. Thank you, Don.